Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to take this opportunity to thank God for the privilege to be here tonight. I want us to reverence the presence of the host and the apostle, the visionary of this meeting. We need to honor her and give her the honor due to her. She's a woman of God, awesome woman. Stand with me on your feet as we honor Mama Apostle, as we honor her and reverence her. And thank God for the vision that God has given to her. I want you to give God praise. Mom, as I prayed to come into the service tonight, God told me, he said, that his hand is on your life. And God said to me, I didn't call you for a congregation. I called you for a generation. And I put a word in your mouth that will liberate people, not only in cities, but in nations of the world. God said, I will plant your feet in the hands of great people that will take you to places on planet Earth. Churches and ministries will be re-transformed, transfigurated by the power of God that God has placed in your mouth. You are called not for a congregation, but for a generation. That's what the Lord told me. Let's give God praise if you will tonight. Let's give God praise if you will tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to take a few minutes of your time. I'm not preaching. I am not the preacher tonight. I just want to tell you that God is real and God is good. I want to thank God for this opportunity and the privilege given to me by the apostle just to share a word of greeting to the people of God. I want to thank you, woman of God, and I honor you and the grace that is upon your life. You will not be doing what you're doing if it's not for the grace of God. I appreciate God for your life. Let's celebrate her. Let's celebrate her. Let's celebrate her. The anointing you respect is the same anointing that can propel you to your next season. Amen. I'm here with my beautiful wife. I call her my roast chicken and potatoes. Hallelujah. She is my seven colors of rainbows. Yes, the treasure that gives me pleasure. Tell the person next to you, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Say like you believe it, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Say I'm too anointed to be disappointed. Say it again, I'm too anointed to be disappointed. And I'm too fired up to be fed up. Give God praise if you will tonight. Hallelujah. Before I bring the word, I just want to share this quickly with you. I have been preaching since I was 18. I started preaching. I went into full-time ministry at the age of 18. I've been preaching since then, over two decades. I've been preaching. I started early. God caught me very early. So I didn't wake up overnight and became a pastor. I was born to do what I'm doing because I have passion for God. At the time when people thought I would never make it even in ministry, God and it was upon my life. If God said it, he'll bring it to pass. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Can somebody say amen? amen. God can never start a thing that he cannot complete. If he started, it means he has the ability to complete it. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Your life would never be the same. This meeting is not organized just to bring people together. This meeting was planned to change destinies of God's people. And I believe as you leave here today, some of you get back home. Some things that have been messed up will be rearranged by the power of the Spirit of God. Somebody will say amen. I just want to read one scripture quickly as I... Before I sit down, Elijah in the book of 1 King, chapter 17, I'll read from verse 1. The Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was the inhabitant of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain three this year, but according to my word. Verse 2, the Bible said, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn 
eastward and hide thyself by the blue cherub that is before Jordan. And the Bible says in verse 4, And it came to pass, or it shall be, that thou shalt drink of the brook. And, and I have commanded a raven to feed thee there. I have commanded a raven to feed thee there. In other words, before you get there, I have already made the provision. So I will command a raven bird to feed you before you get there. In other words, I have told him to feed you. Before you get there, God has already made the provision. There's no such thing as poverty. Poverty is the state of the mind. I don't believe that because my daddy was poor, then I have to be poor. I don't believe in all that. Poverty is the state of the mind. God did not send the apostle into Impangene to just send people to stick the word into your life, but to bring a supernatural turn around in your destiny. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Elijah was a man of God. The Bible did not tell us about this family of the history of Elijah, the family he came from. The Bible did not give us details about his life. But the Bible told us he showed up in the dark days when the Israel was in that time. When Ahab was ruling the people of God. And watch this, watch this, watch this. Ahab was not just a wicked man. Ahab was more of a weak man because of the wife Jezebel was the one ruling. So he wasn't wicked, he was weak. He was weak because he wasn't in control. Can I preach this or do I leave this alone? Somebody say power. And the Bible said now Ahab ruled, but Elisha showed up when the Israel was in the dark days. And the Bible said God told Elisha to tell Elijah to tell Ahab that the heaven shall be shut for three and a half years. But what the thing I love the words, Elisha said, at my word. In other words, God didn't say it. I'm speaking this word. And God is obligated to back up my word as I release that word. I remember when Jesus came in the book of Mark 11 verse 21. The Bible said Jesus looked at a fig tree and there was no fruit on the tree. And Jesus said, no man eat fruit from you from today. Jesus did not curse the tree. Jesus only spoke to the tree. It was the word he released that cursed the tree. You didn't hear me tonight. Jesus did not curse the tree. Jesus did not say, tree, I command you to die. No, Jesus only said, no man eats from you from today. It was the word he spoke that cursed the tree. Most of you in this house, you might be going for an interview and then you just say the word. Maybe I may not get the job because there are people that are qualified than myself. You did not curse yourself. You only spoke and the word you released cursed the job. Somebody say power. Somebody say power. To cut the long story short, the Bible said that God gave Elijah a direction on where to go to stay because there will be drought in the heavens. The heavens will be sealed up. I came into Impangani as a servant of the Almighty God. That the heavens in Impangani and around this region is about to be split open by the power of the Spirit of God. And somebody will say yes. Somebody will say yes. And the Bible said Elisha had to get an instruction from God. Anytime you are about to create yourself a new season, you need a fresh instruction from God. Because the instruction you obey determines the season you create. Can I question somebody here tonight? Your season is about to turn around because God is bringing you a word that you need to obey God's instruction to create you a new season. The Bible says, and the book where God sent Elisha to dwell, and the Bible says he drank from the book, and bird came to feed him flesh and bread morning and evening. I wonder where the bird got that from, but I'll ask God when I get to heaven. I will ask him when I get to heaven. Because a raven bird does not hold meat. So I wonder why a raven bird will bring meat to Elijah. 
nature. In other words, the thing that the enemy can use to kill you, God can use the same thing to protect your life. Somebody say power. I believe that God can use your enemies to put you in the right place. They might think they hurt in you, but God is using them to prepare you for the next season. I love it when David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou that with me. They come for me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup run over. He said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all, all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says, Yet do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. A shadow of a knife cannot touch you. A shadow of a gun cannot kill you. A shadow of a snake cannot stick you. It is only a shadow. Watch this. You can never see a shadow without a light. The reason why you see the light, it tells you that Jesus is right behind you. That's why you see the light. No weapon shall be enemy formed against you in this season that will prosper. Your God is not dead. Your God is alive. Somebody say power. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out this year. I'm coming out this year. I'm coming out this year. Not by might. Not by power, but by the Spirit of the Almighty God. Somebody say, yeah. I told them back home at church, we have multiracial church. We have the white, the black, the color, the Indian. We have all there. We have all the colors, and we have the rainbows in there. But I told my black sisters at church, I said, don't worry about what people think about you. Because sometimes you don't have the money that the other person has. And some of our black sisters, you know what you do. You do a lot of things in your hair. You fry the hair. Then you braid the hair. Then you put a headpiece on top of that. Good God Almighty. You sit down in the, in the saloon for hours doing your hair. But some of them don't have money to buy the real headpiece. They buy the China one. Oh, you get what I'm saying tonight? Don't look at me like that. Some of them buy the Brazilians. Why some buy the other ones? But some go and buy the one for 49 55 real in the China store. But I tell them all the time, when you pull the China headpiece, if it breaks off, don't worry. Buy a super glue. Put it back together. And come to church. In other words, don't worry about the next person. Don't leave your life to impress nobody. Be your
the right view mirror is so small because what's behind you is not important. Stand up into your feet. Somebody say power. Stand up and say power. Say power. I just came to greet you to tell you that when your books rise up, God has a plan B. Your God is not dead, but He is alive. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I feel this strong, Mama, in my spirit tonight because of the grace that you carry, because of the anointing on your life. I didn't come to preach, I just came to preach you, but I say something in my spirit tonight that the people in this audience need to connect to an anointing over your life. There's something you will carry, and it's not for a congregation, it's for a generation. Watch it. In a season you want to create, it must be something for you to listen to, to obey a word. Okay. God said to me, whatever the problem is, the situation, the solution is there. Wherever the problem is, the solution is there. Moses stayed by the Red Sea and Moses was crying to God and God said, why are you crying to me? The solution to the problem is right where you are, stretch the rod. Come on. And the water congealed. Three days later, the water was bitter. Moses cried to God again. He said, why are you crying to me? He said, the solution to the problem is where the problem is. Cut that stick, put it in the water, and the water was made sweet. The Bible said, a, woman, a man was born blind, crying to Jesus to heal him. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do? He said, that I might receive my sight. He did not know that the solution to his problem was right where he was. Jesus spat on the clay where he sits every day and put the clay in his eyes. And his eyes go open. The devil is a liar. Watch this. God has given us the opportunity to preach the gospel in all the continents of the world. We have traveled until now. We're even tired of traveling. But we have to do it because it's a calling. God has given us the opportunity to share, to share stage with Chris McDonald, with Bill Winston, with, with to the best by money to find him, and most of all those names that you know of. God has given us that opportunity to do that. But before it happens in our lives, it was an instruction that God gave to me that I obeyed. That created a season in my life. A while ago, God told me, he said, release of thousands of dollars into the life of Chris McDonald. Because you don't show down, you show up. And when I did that, thousands of dollars, what thousands of rains in this country, a season was created when I obeyed the instruction. I didn't know obeying him in, 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 in Bradburn, in Johannesburg, while Greek Dollar was preaching at my friend's church, Bishop D.A. Lazarus. He's the pastor of Siloam Ministry. You can find that out. You can check us on YouTube. And watch what happened. I didn't know I would be flying to India. A few weeks later, a, 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 a door opened for us to be in Hyderabad in India. Not knowing I would be on the same stage with Greek Dollar that I heard the word to bless his ministry. I didn't know God wanted to create me a new season by giving me an instruction to obey. And from that time, the heavens was open. People, that people pay to just meet and connect to. don't have to walk for it. I prophesy to everybody in this audience tonight. Now, you have to forgive me tonight. I feel this in my spirit. If you're in this building tonight, and you know you are trying to get into a different level in your life, I'm going to destroy this service tonight. You know you're trying to enter into a different level in your life. If you've been struggling to get into that realm, Whatever it is in your hands, it could be five red, it could be hundred red, it could be three hundred red, it could be five hundred red. Run to the apostle and put some seed on her feet wherever you are. This is not what this meeting is all about, but this is what I heard right now. Take some seed in.
in your head and unlock some second doors in the spirit realm right now wherever you are stand on your feet right now and go to the apostles and drop something on our feet right now and create yourself a new season watch god in your life watch god in your life watch god in your life whatever you are watch god in your life it is a grace on our life it is an oil on our life and an instruction can help you create for yourself a new season the days of waiting and crying are over these are the season and the days for new things to take place in your life and in your ministry and in your family, whatever you are, I know I'm going to stop this sudden, but if you know you are desperate, desperate for something unique in your life, get out from where you are and connect to this oil and change your destiny, not by my own power, but by the spirit of the almighty God. The Lord bless you. You can sing for us if you will tonight.